Have you ever wondered how that shiny gold ring on your finger came to be? Or what it takes to turn a chunk of rock into one of the most valuable metals on Earth? What if I told you the journey of gold involves exploding stars, ancient rivers, and some seriously high-tech science? Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating process of how gold is made, from its cosmic origins to the glittering treasure we know and love. Let's get started. The Cosmic Origins – How Gold is Born in Stars Gold's journey begins billions of years ago, far beyond our planet. Inside the cores of massive stars, extreme temperatures and pressures fuse lighter elements like hydrogen and helium into heavier ones. However, gold isn't formed during a star's regular life cycle. It's created in the cataclysmic explosions of supernovae or the collisions of neutron stars. These violent events release enormous amounts of energy, forcing protons and neutrons to combine into heavy elements like gold. This process, known as nucleosynthesis, is how gold and other precious metals are born. Once formed, gold is scattered into space as stardust, mixing with gas and debris from the explosion. Over millions of years, these particles become part of interstellar clouds, which eventually collapse to form new stars, planets, and solar systems. When Earth formed around 4.5 billion years ago, it inherited traces of this gold from the cosmic debris swirling around the young sun. This means the gold we mine today has a history that spans the universe itself. Interestingly, gold is relatively rare in the universe compared to lighter elements like carbon or oxygen. This rarity is due to the extreme conditions required for its formation. Without the explosive deaths of stars or the collisions of neutron stars, gold simply wouldn't exist. This makes gold not just a precious metal on Earth, but a cosmic treasure forged in the most dramatic events in the universe. Today, scientists study gold's origins using advanced telescopes and simulations to understand these cosmic processes. By analyzing the light from distant stars and supernovae, they've confirmed that gold's creation is tied to some of the most energetic events in the cosmos. So, every piece of gold you see is a tiny fragment of the universe's history, carrying the legacy of ancient stars, space to Earth. How gold arrived on our planet. After its formation in space, gold had to make its way to Earth. This journey began during the early stages of our solar system's formation. As the sun and planets took shape, gold and other heavy elements were incorporated into the mix of dust and gas that orbited the young sun. Over time, these materials clumped together to form asteroids, comets, and planetesimals, the building blocks of planets. During Earth's formation, the planet was a molten ball of rock and metal. Heavy elements like gold sank toward the core in a process called planetary differentiation. This means most of Earth's gold is actually deep within its core, far beyond our reach. However, some gold remained near the surface, mixed with other materials in the Earth's crust. Later, a period of intense asteroid bombardment, known as the Late Heavy Bombardment, brought additional gold to Earth's surface. These asteroids, remnants of the early solar system, carried gold and other precious metals. When they collided with Earth, they deposited their cargo, enriching the crust with gold. Over billions of years, geological processes like volcanic activity and erosion redistributed this gold, creating the deposits we mine today. Today, gold is found in various forms, from tiny flakes in riverbeds to large veins in rock. Its distribution is uneven, with some regions, like South Africa and Australia, having particularly rich deposits. This uneven distribution is a result of Earth's dynamic geological history, which concentrated gold in certain areas over millions of years. Without these cosmic and geological processes, gold would remain hidden deep within the Earth, forever out of reach. The Hunt for Gold Prospecting and Exploration Finding gold is no easy task. It requires a combination of science, technology, and a bit of luck. The process begins with prospecting, where geologists search for signs of gold in the Earth's crust. They look for geological formations, such as quartz veins or alluvial deposits, that are known to contain gold. Traditional methods, like panning in rivers, are still used in some areas. But modern exploration relies heavily on advanced technology. Geologists use tools like satellite imagery, aerial surveys, and geochemical analysis to identify potential gold deposits. 
They collect rock and soil samples to test for traces of gold, often working in remote and challenging environments. Once a promising site is identified, more detailed exploration begins, including drilling to extract core samples and map the deposit's size and quality. This stage is crucial because mining is expensive and time-consuming. Companies need to be sure a deposit is economically viable before investing in extraction. Advanced computer models and 3D mapping help geologists estimate the amount of gold present and plan the most efficient way to mine it. The hunt for gold is a global effort, with exploration taking place on every continent. Some of the largest gold deposits have been found in places like the Witwatersrand Basin in South Africa, the Carlin Trend in Nevada, and the Super Pit in Australia. Each discovery is the result of years of research, hard work, and cutting-edge technology, proving that finding gold is as much a science as it is an art. Mining gold, extracting the precious metal from the earth. Once a gold deposit is located, the next step is mining. There are two main types of gold mining, surface mining and underground mining. Surface mining, also known as open pit mining, is used when gold is found near the surface. Large machines remove layers of soil and rock to expose the gold-bearing ore. This method is efficient but can have significant environmental impacts, including habitat destruction and water pollution. Underground mining is used for deeper deposits. Miners dig tunnels and shafts to reach the gold, often working in challenging and dangerous conditions. This method requires specialized equipment and safety measures to protect workers from hazards like cave-ins and toxic gases. Once the ore is extracted, it's transported to a processing plant for further refinement. In recent years, new technologies have made mining more efficient and environmentally friendly. For example, heap leaching uses a chemical solution to extract gold from low-grade ore, reducing the need for extensive digging. Similarly, biomining uses bacteria to break down ore and release gold, offering a more sustainable alternative to traditional methods. Despite these advances, gold mining remains a complex and resource-intensive process. It requires careful planning, skilled workers, and significant investment. However, the rewards can be immense, with a single mine producing billions of dollars worth of gold over its lifetime. From the depths of the earth to the surface, mining is the first step in transforming raw gold into the precious metal we value so highly. Crushing and grinding, breaking down the ore. After mining, the gold-bearing ore is transported to a processing plant, where it undergoes crushing and grinding. This step is essential because gold is often trapped within hard rock, making it difficult to extract. Large crushers break the ore into smaller pieces, which are then ground into a fine powder using ball mills or other grinding equipment. The goal is to liberate the gold particles from the surrounding rock, making them easier to separate. This process can be energy-intensive, as the ore must be ground to a consistency similar to talcum powder. Water is often added to create a slurry, which is then pumped into tanks for further processing. Crushing and grinding are critical because they determine how much gold can be recovered. If the ore isn't ground finely enough, some gold may remain trapped and go to waste. On the other hand, overgrinding can increase costs and energy consumption. Modern plants use advanced monitoring systems to optimize this process, ensuring maximum gold recovery with minimal waste. Once the ore is finely ground, it's ready for the next stage, separating the gold from the rest of the material. This is where the real magic happens, as the precious metal is extracted and purified, inching closer to its final form. The refining process, turning raw gold into pure metal. The refining process is where raw gold is transformed into the pure, shiny metal we recognize. The first step is separation, where the gold is extracted from the crushed ore. This is often done using cyanidation, a chemical process that dissolves gold into a solution. The gold-laden solution is then treated with activated carbon or zinc to precipitate the gold, turning it back into a solid. Next, the gold undergoes smelting, where it's heated to high temperatures to remove impurities like silver, copper, and other metals. The result is a gold-silver alloy called doré, which is further refined to achieve higher purity. One common method is the Miller process, which uses chlorine gas to separate gold from other metals. The gold is melted and exposed to chlorine, which reacts with impurities and forms a slag that can be skimmed off. 
For even higher purity, the wool will process is used. This electrolytic method involves dissolving the gold in a chemical solution and passing an electric current through it. Pure gold collects on the cathode, while impurities remain in the solution. This process can produce gold that's 99.99% pure, making it suitable for industrial and investment purposes. Refining is a precise and delicate process, requiring specialized equipment and expertise. The result is gold in its purest form, ready to be shaped into bars, coins, or jewelry. This transformation from raw ore to refined metal is a testament to human ingenuity.